Can't believe I'm doing this. Hello and welcome to Challenge to Build. Today's video is a review on this Monster Evolution Tools chop saw. This is their S355 MCS. This is the latest, greatest, and probably the best metal cutting chop saw that there is on the market today. Uh, this is a dry cutting 14 inch saw specifically designed for metal, um, various different alloys, color coded blades, making things very easy. Uh, I personally love Evolution Tools as far as a brand. I purchased one of their S380 CPS saws a few years ago. And after using that saw, uh, I reached out to them and asked them, hey, can you send me one of your 355 MCSs for a review? Because I'd love to get my hands on it and check it out. And well, they did. And here it is. And this thing is an absolute beast. Uh, I've already taken it out of the box. Packaging uh, was top notch. Everything was uh, packaged nicely in foam. Uh, you do have to put it together, but it's extremely simple to do. It's basically just taking the saw head, sliding it onto the slide mechanism here on the back, uh, putting in a few Allen screws, and then putting together the clamping system. It probably took me less than 15 minutes to get it together and uh, am super excited to be able to do this review and actually get into ready to use this saw because I still haven't made any cuts with it. And you might think, well, how can you give me a review on something that you haven't even used yet? And it's simple because uh, after using this one for quite a few years, uh, Evolution Tools builds a top-notch piece of equipment. And this one is no different other than the fact that it takes the uh, basic principles of a wood cutting miter chop saw and they have integrated it into with an industry first miter chop saw that moves 45 degrees. I'm in a little bit of an awkward position, but it moves 45 degrees in both the right hand and left hand directions, giving you the ability to make clean miter cuts. So I'm going to structure this review video probably slightly different than most uh, videos that you may have seen on this particular saw. When I do my product reviews, I generally try to keep a even playing field on any products that I review. So I generally just pull them right out of the box and then go right into the review. This way here, there's no sugar coating or favoring any kind of imperfection with any piece of equipment that I use. So it's kind of like an even playing field in my opinion. Uh, secondly, I'm going to go over some basic specs, uh, starting with cutting capacities. I have them here listed right off of the uh, website. So Cutting capacities are mild steel plate, max thickness of a half inch. Stainless steel max thickness is 13 64ths. Square tube at 90 degrees, mild steel is four and three quarters of an inch by four and three quarters of an inch. Square tube at 45, uh, miter left is four by four. Square tube at 45 degrees right, is inch and three quarter by inch and three quarter. So quite a bit different from mitering left to mitering right. So keep that in mind. Rectangle tube at 90 degrees uh, is six and a half inches by four inches. Rectangle tube at 45 degrees is four and a half by inch and three quarters. Round tube at 90 degrees is four and three quarters of an inch. Round tube at 45 degrees, mild steel is four inches. And then the minimum cut off piece length is 5 sixteenths of an inch. So those are some of your basic cutting capacities of this saw. We're gonna test a few of them here in a little bit. I have two by three, two by two, a piece of three inch exhaust tubing and something that I would re not recommend you cut, but something that I was challenged to cut and we'll see if we can do it is a piece of railroad track. Um, I had gotten a comment from an earlier post saying that if you cut through a piece of railroad track, uh, I would buy one. So we're gonna test it out and Evolution may or may not uh, appreciate that, but that's what we're gonna do. Uh, as far as the motor, this is a 15 amp uh, motor running on 120 volts uh, at 60 Hertz. The no load speed is 1450 RPMs.
<coughs> the max miter left to right is plus or minus 46 degrees, and then the cord length is 10 feet. And the reason I am going through some of these specifications is this way here, uh, whether or not you may have looked into this saw already, uh, this way here you don't have to go searching for them. Again, these were pulled directly off of the website. So that takes care of the specs. And probably what you really care about is the actual cutting. Uh, before we do, obviously, nice user manual. Take a, take a minute, read through it. Um, good information in there to make sure you're using it properly. Uh, also, there is a three-year warranty on this saw, so you're going to want to make sure that you register this um, for the warranty. This way here, if there's any issues or problems, uh, they got you covered there. The reason I mention this is because on this saw over here, this is their 15-inch model S380. When I had gotten this saw, there was a problem with the blade, uh, and I called the customer service. They were able to diagnose the problem figure out uh, how to resolve it. They sent me a new blade, and that thing has been cutting uh, ever since problem-free. So it is important that you register your product for the warranty, um, along with just more general knowledge of the product. Now to talk about cutting and whether or not you should think about buying this particular saw. In my personal opinion, now that this saw is on the market, this is the one I think you should probably buy. I personally have a really bad habit of doing my research on what I need to cut and then, or really with any kind of appliance or tool, and then I always go overboard and then just buy the biggest and the best I can because I don't like having certain limitations. Now, with that being said, there is no perfect saw. Each tool has a specific use in your garage. If you are watching this video, there's a good chance that you are thinking about purchasing something like this. And what I will say is, with any of these pieces of equipment, you can see I have my uh, metal cutting bandsaw sitting over here. And the reason this is sitting here is to kind of broaden the scope of cutting cap uh, capabilities, um, supporting that there is no perfect saw. But if you are going to be purchasing a saw like this, look at these as an investment and not just a purchase. Um, they will definitely maximize productivity, also, maximize the quality of your cutting because before I owned this saw, 95% of my cutting was done by an essential tool in the garage, which is an angle grinder. And if you are in the market for a metal cutting chop saw, I would encourage you to, if you are unable to purchase something like this, continue to save your money because after the purchase is made, it is so worth the investment in time to be able to get your hands on a saw like this and um, just cut faster, cleaner, uh, and more consistently with a saw like this, even this. The reason this is here is to give you a cost comparison. This saw over here is well over $1,000 now, and this one can be had for right around $850, depending on where you live with your taxes and different things like that. So as far as a cost, this one is cheaper and has very similar capabilities as to this one as far as mitering left to right and even the cut quality. So all that to say, uh, I've been told plenty of times that I talk too much in my videos, but I am very passionate about trying to give the best information to you, the viewer and or purchaser regarding any of these kind of uh, pieces of equipment in the reviews because they aren't cheap. And um, yes, it's just my opinion. There are plenty of other videos out there regarding these tools, but if you're looking to make a purchase, this one would definitely be one to put on the list. All right, so a few uh, remaining points I wanna make uh, before I get into actually cutting. Obviously, safety gear, gloves, uh, earplugs, uh, visor or safety glasses uh, is always a good idea. Uh, also, in the beginning of the video, you heard me mention something about a slide mechanism. This is not intended to be a slide miter saw. They give you three different positions uh, for the head of the saw on this slide back here to orient the blade in what Evolution recommends as the proper positioning. Uh, and they give you a little printout, uh, one, how to install the motor head onto the slide, and then different materials 
uh, different orientations on the blade to give you the best possible cutting orientation of blade contact of where the blade actually comes down and hits the saw to give you the best cut possible. So we're gonna kind of mess with that a little bit here. Uh, one thing that in a lot of the videos, people are saying that the clamping mechanism is very cumbersome. And while I'm not gonna disagree with that, um, I can say after using the S380, the platform on the S380 is substantially smaller than your miter saw. Uh, and again, this takes a lot of the similar uh, concept from a wood miter box and put it into a metal cutting chop saw. When I bought this one, this one wasn't on the market yet. Had this one been on the market, I would have bought this one. Um, so in regards to the clamping system, it is nice to see a robust mechanism to securely clamp the material to the fence and the table. They give you three different, well, two different methods um, to combine the two. You have your front clamping, and again, everything is pretty easily. Uh, speed, as far as speed clamps, you flip them over, adjust them in. They give you these adapters that slip on to the front and there's little ball detents. I'll give you a close up, but there's little ball detents on the clamp to allow it to stay in the position. And then they also give you a clamp for downward, pre downward pressure, excuse me, uh, which can then be moved right to left and there's different um, slots to be able to install it. Uh, and then they also give you multiple different clamping solutions for additional accessories. So a lot of clamping ability on this particular saw where this wasn't a thing on their older models. So while it is a bit cumbersome, especially when you're trying to grab the adjustment to be able to go miter left to right, while I don't think we're gonna be moving it back um, at a significant rate during our cuts, uh, it is something that you will have to work with and just be accustomed to working through and let's see here. Oh, well, duh. I got to loosen the clamp here. And it also gives you the ability to raise and lower. And then once in a higher position, they give you these little speed wing nuts to be able to tighten it down. And everything slides left to right, moves left to right. Everything is spring, you know, spring loaded for speed. So again, it is slightly cumbersome, but considering what we're dealing with as far as cutting, um, it is nice to see all of the ability that this has and it just is going to be some getting used to it's simple as that it's not going to keep me from buying it and using it i'll tell you that much um just solely for the fact that there's not another saw out there on the market like this so let's get into cutting all right so finally for the first cut i'm going to go ahead and slice through this piece of two by three rectangle tubing this has an eighth wall thickness and I'm going to go ahead and set this thing up. Clamping it down nice and solid. Uh, it's nice to have the clamp on the other end of the cut, keeping everything nice and square and secure. So this is going to be quite interesting. Uh, as far as using the method in which they recommend to cut, what it basically boils down to is having the path of least resistance for the blade on the initial start of the cut. This way here, there's less wear and less surface area that the blade has to cut through, uh, wearing it out a little bit faster. So I'm gonna go ahead and just use the slide mechanism. And I'm actually gonna bring it back to the very back. They actually say you kinda wanna have it start in the front, but using the slide, it doesn't really reach there, so we're going to go ahead and just reverse it because it's still path of least resistance and it should just cut just fine. Secure, secure, safety gear, and here's the first cut with the S355 MCS by Evolution Tools. Let's see what happens. Here we go.
And for the first cut, I mean, it's exactly what I expected. It's like a hot knife through butter. And uh, we're going to go on to the next cut. I do like the clamping on both sides of the piece. And now I'm going to do another cut with the 2x3. And this time I'm going to go for a 45. So let's see how this is going to work. Um, we have a bigger capability going left. So I'm going to go ahead and move this to the left. We're going to slide this up. And we're going to go with that. We're going to bring this one over here as well. And we'll see if we can maybe use this edge clamp. That's going to come in the saw. We're going to use the down clamp super close over here. Getting to play with new tools is always fun. We're going to put the down pressure on it so it doesn't move. And all of this clamping ability will just, yes, it might take a little bit longer to get everything set up, but you're going to get the best cut possible with everything uh, locked into position. So with that, here goes cut number two at a 45 degree. Smooth as silk. Try doing that with an angle grinder. Not that you can't, but let's see what this looks like. All right, here we go. Chewy. Like I said, try doing that with an angle grinder. <laughs> That's freaking awesome. Absolutely crisp and clean 45, nice and flat. That's where that clamping comes into play. And the speed in which this can cut the 45 definitely outperforms my bandsaw. Uh, the only difference is the bandsaw, one of the pros to that is you can set uh, the hydraulic descent, walk away, multitask a little bit. However, in the speed that this produces it, I mean, within less than 30 seconds, I mean, there's not even a burr on this thing. I mean, if you were in the production shop, you hit this thing with the grinder, clean it up, weld it together, and you're on to the next you're on to the next piece of uh, fabrication or, or next cut, whatever it may be. So, very awesome. I like that. That will definitely be a huge benefit. And like I said, this is two by three, eighth wall. So now that that's been cut, obviously two by two, I wonder if I got anything else. Square. You know what we're going to do? Rather than cutting another piece of like square or rectangle, I'm going to get a piece of quarter inch angle and I'll chop through a piece of quarter inch angle. Uh, we'll do some exhaust pipe and then we'll finish it off with seeing if we can cut through the railroad track. All right, so next up, uh, I thought I had a bigger piece, but this will work just fine. It'll actually kind of show us how well uh, clamping a small piece will work. This is a piece of three inch by three inch quarter wall thickness angle iron. 
And for the way they suggest cutting it, obviously putting it down flat, allowing the point to be sticking up. And for this, I think what I'll do is we will clamp to the right side. And I like how that looks there. It's gonna be tight, but it'll work. I hope if I flip that down. So I'm gonna give you a close up picture of what this has got as far as clamping. Uh, using the supplied little adapter for the, for the front clamps, even the, the bottom clamp actually. Uh, this angle here, I feel like might actually be a 45 because it's meshing up with how this angle is sitting here quite nicely. So that works out pretty well. Keep it from like kicking up. Nice and snug and uh, We'll make a straight cut. Let's see here. Uh, let's slide this all the way forward. And that needs to clamp down for sure. The You can see it's rocking. And this is why it's important to clamp your material down solid. overall clamping it's the best I can do but should work just fine all right here we go back together you can hardly tell it it's been cut so again three inch angle quarter wall again no issues at all uh, if I had a bigger piece I would try mitering a piece because that would be like a pretty compound cut on this uh, but I, I don't have a piece big enough but I know that it would do it uh, as far as cutting speed I think that's all relative to material thickness and just overall like speed in which you need to get the piece cut. Uh, the slower the cut, the less heat will be put into the blade and probably will make the blade last longer. Uh, so considering the cost of the blade, <coughs> excuse me, uh, your cutting speed will play a part in overall uh, wear and tear on that blade. Now I'm gonna cut a piece of three inch exhaust tubing and this stuff is only 16 gauge and this is probably where the height of the clamp will come into play let's see here I'm gonna raise it up a little bit speed clamp all right <clears throat> now I will say with cutting the exhaust pipe, this is where this mitering capability is going to come into play uh, in a big, big way. When I was working on the exhaust on my Suburban, this played a huge role in being able to make pie cuts. And while this had the ability to set the angle, uh, it was a bit cumbersome. Not as quick, not as clean, uh, it took a lot of time. Definitely uh, the ability to be able to just push a, a button and have these presets uh, will speed up 
the angles and repetitiveness, right? So once it's set, you'll be able to make the same cut multiple times on the left and right hand miters. So if you do a lot of exhaust work and or turbos uh, for intakes and stuff like that, this is going to be a huge asset in making those cuts when it comes to specifically pie cuts. So that's kind of what I'm going to do. I'm going to make a couple cuts with this and basically make a couple pie cuts on an angle. We're going to press that down. This downward clamp is huge. I'm finding that I really like the downward pressure when I'm cutting. Uh, and we will go with the preset of 15 degrees. So here's cut one. I'm going to try not even moving this thing. I'm going to come back to 15 degrees the other way. And I'm going to just go for it. My guess is that it'll be no material left back here, but if I cut slow, we'll see what happens. And this is where the speed of left to right miters back and forth for pie cuts is going to be a huge, huge game changer. Okay, now I did expect that to happen, but let's, uh, I'm going to keep going with this. Let's see, take a couple burrs off because that was dang near zero. And I'm going to make one more. So this is kind of what we're working with right now. I'm going to make one more cut and see what happens. This time I'm going to move the pipe. I'm going to come back 15 degrees the other way. And if I was doing this, I would probably have a reference mark on the fence or the table. This way here, the rotation of the pipe doesn't change and it's the same angle all the time. That's where you have to kind of get a little creative in the clamping. But I did slide it down, clamped it up. We'll make one more cut and then we'll put all the pieces together to see what we got. if I can do this. So three 15 degree cuts. One, two, three. So we have successfully made. Yeah, look at that. That is really, really slick. So I'm going to give you a close-up picture of what I'm holding. Hopefully you can see it. But I mean, if you're doing exhaust work or intake work for turbos or downpipes or any of that stuff, cold air intakes, I mean, this thing is, you clean these suckers up and this is ready to be TIG welded. That is really, really slick.
can't hold it, but I'm going to get it together. I'll take a picture and show you, but that's awesome. And I had a feeling it was going to be that good. So yeah, this is a, this is a one of a kind saw on the market for sure. And I think it's well worth the investment that needs to be made for it. And with that, we're going to end this video by doing something that I probably shouldn't. But we're going to be careful and I'm going to go at cutting this piece of railroad track because if you haven't seen enough already, once I cut through this piece of railroad track, you better buy an S355 MCS from Evolution Tool. <clears throat> So, here we go. And now there is a little bit of deflection being this high up, but I am putting a substantial amount of pressure on these clamps to make sure that this is good and solid because there's nothing holding this back edge. And I think I'm going to go get my other phone and set my other phone up here videoing this because this is a one time shot. So give me one second. <coughs> All right. Well, I got my other phone set up over here. I'll kind of give you a, a picture in picture as I cut this. This is a one-time only Evolution Power Tools. I'm sorry, but not really. So obviously I do not recommend using your saw to cut railroad track, but to prove a point to me and anybody else that what's the capability, well, I guess we're going to find out. Railroad track with the S355 MCS. Here we go. Can't believe I'm doing this. Well, I don't want to hear anybody say that this saw isn't worth the money because I just put it through about a year's worth of cutting, maybe even more, and my own torture test. And it was getting hot. I had to switch the blade, I had to switch the track around once I made the cut because it was having a hard time cutting through all of the meat of the metal. And you can see the heat that was being created. And, uh, well, <clears throat> the proof is in the cut.
I don't know what else I have to do. I don't know what else I have to say. I don't have to do or say anything else, actually. Uh, Evolution Tools, S355 MCS. <laughs> I'm done. I'm out. What else do I do with that? I can't beat that. That's a one and done. Well, it made the cut through the railroad track, and I know that uh, I sped the video up in some segments. I clipped it together. That cut took me approximately 15 minutes to make. Uh, I made a few, I, I brought it down in, made a few cuts, I brought it back up, let the blade cool, took it back down in for some more material. Uh, when I was cutting through the thickest part over here, uh, it really was struggling to cut. So what I ended up having to do to finish the cut was flip the track up to finish it. But regardless, it still cut through a piece of railroad track. Do not, or not even do not, there's no need to cut railroad track with your Evolution S355 MCS. Uh, because of the unique position that I have to be able to do these reviews, um, gives me the ability to torture test uh, in my own unique way, and this was the torture test. With all of the equipment that I review, uh, it's upfront, honest, no holds bar. And like I said, I was challenged by a comment to cut through a piece of railroad track. And I was like, you know what? I'll do it because of the position that I'm in, I have the ability and it shows you the full capability substantially well beyond anything that you would do with this saw. Uh, and I bet you looking at this blade, believe it or not, there's really not that much wear on it. And I can continue cutting with this thing um, for quite a while. I probably put at least a solid year's worth of wear and tear on this saw in a matter of 15 minutes. So if there's any second guessing, any hesitation on whether or not this is strong enough for your application, I think I just proved it. And there's really not much else for me to say about that. So, I mean, phenomenal saw. I'm really not surprised um, because this saw has been outstanding for the couple years that I've had it. Uh, my One of my most favorite things, and I think I touched on it a little bit, was specifically with exhaust tubing and intake tubing, the fact that you can make pie cuts back and forth for different intake applications or exhaust applications, making headers or whatever that you're doing. I mean, super, super efficient in making the cuts. And uh, with all of the efficiency and the speed, we'll obviously, if you're in production, we'll speed up your production and just ultimately be a sound investment um, for your shop. Even if you're a DIYer, kind of some more or less like myself, the ability to go from making cuts with an angle grinder to having something like this in your shop, I mean, it just makes you feel good too. Um, I remember when I bought that and had that and was using that, just the, the really the first cut that I made, I was just like, wow, why didn't I get this sooner? And uh, this is no different. So with that, I know it was a long review. I know I talk a lot, but I think it was worth it. Please leave me a comment in the comment section below. Let me know what you think. Um, I want to give a big shout out to Evolution Tools for sending me this. Um, hopefully they are impressed with the video. Hopefully they're not gonna be too mad at me for torture testing their machine. Also, I wanna say thank you to Evolution Tools for giving me a promo code, uh, which is challenge. Uh, now there is some stipulation with that. Unfortunately, because of the market for these saws, the promo code will not work on their metal cutting chop saws and a few other pieces of equipment that they sell. Now, while you'll be like, eh, what the heck, why not? Hey, it's what it is. Their policy is their policy. I respect that. However, the promo code will work for other equipment that they sell. I was kind of messing around with it a little bit. It'll work on their mag drills, accessories. It will work on replacement blades. So at least it's something, and I'm thankful for that. So I want to say again, thank you to Evolution Tools for the promo code. Again, promo code CHALLENGE at checkout will save you 5%. Um, 
with that, there's really not much else for me to say. I've about exhausted everything and that cut kind of wore me out. So with that, thanks for watching. Uh, hopefully this review was able to answer some of your questions. And for any more information, there is a link below that will take you directly to Evolution Tools website. Thanks again for watching. Get out there, go challenge your build, and I will see you in an upcoming review and or video.